Good evening, welcome to church. Welcome to church. We thank God for the privilege of being in church. It's beautiful to always be in God's presence in the church. Praise Jesus forevermore. There's so much strength and so much grace. <laughs> My son is dancing in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hear his name, Sotiri, and you are saying the voice is not just in the spirit. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. So there's so much strength and grace when we gather in God's presence as God's people. Joe, is that communion or personal bread? Is it personal biscuit or communion biscuit? If it's personal, you'll share it around. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. So we thank God for, there's only so much joy in God's presence. So much joy. So you have to look and look for many joys so that there will be so much joy. <laughs> Praise Jesus, very well. So we thank God for the privilege of coming to his presence again. And this is how we we'll do, 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 to become like Jesus. I can promise you one thing. You can't become like Jesus in your room. You can't. Like, you don't want to come to church. You don't want to attend a local assembly. You don't want to be a part of a local assembly. You just want to be in your room and be a good Christian and be like Jesus. I promise you, you can't be like Jesus like that. This is how you'll be like Jesus. You come to church, we fellowship, we fight small. After we fight, we settle it. We will offend ourselves. You understand? Like Ezekiel will tell Ezekiel, it's only about five years or two years. It's only what? She will become angry. She will burst. She will show the guy. They still continue to rule. You understand? Praise Jesus, everyone. Church is so beautiful. So beautiful. Church is beautiful. I was going to carry the spirit anywhere we are. The spirit of the church. Amen. So the local assembly, the spirit of local assembly. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We have looking about we have been looking at our assembly together. That you prepare yourself. The Lord will give you so much grace. Don't give you so much grace. So much grace. And it's praying for great things. Praying for great things. You must enlarge your coast. You must enlarge your heart. Enlarge your enlarge your capacity. The things ahead of you, the things God has planned for you. It's beyond what you can dream of. You've not dreamt of it before. The dreams, what you are seeing is a glimpse, is a pointer to the things God has for you. So you can't afford to have a small mindset. I need a lot of spiritual power for this. It's not ministering because it's not that you'll be preaching. It's not. You understand? You are going to the, you are going to infiltrate the systems of the world. So much. So much. You understand? You need so much spiritual energy for you to. You need so much spiritual energy. Because if you go there, you can't even get there without this kind of spiritual energy. You want to get there by the hand of the Lord. You can get there by another hand. You understand? We don't get it by the hand of the Lord. By the ordination of the Lord. You need so much spiritual energy. You must. You must take your Christian work as if it's your career. Because actually that's your career. Your career is what will carry your career. It's what will carry you. You must take your Christian work as if it's your life. Because it's your life. Because you are made, you are made for great things. You are made for great things. You are made for great things. Even me, I don't even know how great it is, but I, I'm, what I'm seeing in my heart, the understanding, I just know you are made for great things. The Lord is preparing for the days ahead. I must prepare yourself and enlarge your heart. <laughs> don't joke with your Christian work. Oh. Don't joke with your Christian work. That's what you need for your assignment. That's what you need to fulfill your kingdom mandate. You are entering the systems of the world. You are infiltrating those systems. You don't have to, you don't have to pick the mic to preach. You, know, you might not pick, pick the mic to preach. But God wants you to infiltrate those systems. He wants to bring his kingdom into those systems. He wants to bring his kingdom into your sphere of operation. And you are going to be an household name. You are going to be an household name. You are going to be an household name. But my brother, you need so much spiritual energy. 
And spiritual energy comes in place of our walk with God. And part of that work includes your participation in the local assembly. And also your personal devotion to the Lord. You can't joke with it. You can't joke. Nothing is as important as what I'm talking about. Nothing should take priority in your heart as what I'm talking about. If you want to come into these ordinations, you can't joke with your Christian work. You can't. You have to take it more serious. May the Lord help you in Jesus' name. The spirit of the local assembly. So we're looking at our assembling together. And what we began to see this morning was that the Christian man was not saved to come to heaven. <laughs> was not saved to make heaven as it were. Praise Jesus. He was not saved to make heaven. Shout hallelujah. He was saved for kingdom service. Are you following me? He was saved for what? I began to see, as Paul spoke in Ephesians chapter 4 in the morning, that he that descended is also he that ascended, that he might fill all things with himself. So the mandate of Jesus is that he wants to fill everywhere. You look into entertainment and you are seeing Jesus. Look into the media and you are seeing Jesus. Look into fashion and you are seeing Jesus. Look into education and you are seeing Jesus. You understand? He's supposed to fill everything everywhere with himself. But he can only do this through the saints. So he has given the saints the work of the ministry. Shout hallelujah. That as the saints are doing the work of the ministry, praise Jesus forevermore, Jesus is filling everywhere with himself. And I said in the morning that the work of the ministry is not restricted to the four walls of the church. In fact, when it comes to the church and the work of the ministry, are you following me? Shout hallelujah. When it comes to the four walls of the church, this sound is echoing. Praise Jesus forevermore. When it comes to the work of the ministry and the four walls of the church, there is little work of the ministry you will do inside the church. Are you following me? You know, I used to pay attention at all. Praise Jesus forevermore. Hallelujah. There is little work of the ministry you will do where? Inside the church. The larger part, the greater part of the work of the ministry you will do is in the world. Are you following me? It's in the world. Shout hallelujah. And for that purpose of doing the work of the ministry, you need to be trained. The reason you come to church is so you can be trained for the work of the ministry, for your engagement outside the world. The Bible says Jesus descended and ascended and gave us gifts. Gave us, he gave gifts to men. He gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers so they can train the saints. So the world cannot, so the saints cannot go and do the work of the ministry. So that in their doing the work of the ministry, Jesus cannot fill everywhere with himself. Are you following me? But don't forget that the work of the ministry is your engagement of the world. An infiltration of the world, of the systems of the world, with the kingdom of God. So that eventually, the kingdoms of this world will become that of our Lord and his Christ. Praise Jesus forevermore. The kingdoms of this world will become that of our Lord and his Christ, not because some angels will descend and begin to do some, some stuff. They will become that of our Lord and his Christ because the saints will infiltrate the systems of this world with the kingdom of God. Because the saints will go all out to do the work of the ministry. Praise Jesus forevermore. Even though they will be assisted by angels. Are you following me? And because your engagement with the systems of the world, are you following me? Is a strong engagement. <laughs> you just think you are only doing tailoring, you are doing fashion. 
You only think you are doing entertainment, you are into police and all that. But those terrains are spiritual terrains. They are terrains that have been governed for so long by the powers of darkness. Are you following me? They are terrains that have been hijacked and uh, infiltrated by the powers of darkness. Because Satan was speaking to Jesus. He said, if you can bow to me and worship me, I'll give you the kingdoms of this world, the powers of this world that were delivered to me. So through the fall of Adam, man delivered the kingdoms of this world to Satan. Are you following me? But Jesus came to regain it. And we see the practicality of that regaining as the saints go out to what? Do the work of the ministry. But if the saints don't go out to do the work of the ministry in experience, the, the, the citizens of the world will be governed by evil spirits. But men will be in charge. So evil spirits will be ruling whilst men are figuring. And some men would themselves be, be in alignment with evil spirits. Are you following me? So because your sphere of oppression, the place they are sending you to is full of beasts. Friends, politics is full of beasts. Fashion is full of beasts. Entertainment is full of beasts. Education is full of beasts. Those spheres are full of beasts. Not just demons, principalities, spirits, high power spirits, wicked spirits. Are you following me? And that's why we are sending you to do the work of the ministry. That's why we are sending you to be a witness for the Lord Jesus. Now, because these are the things you'll be confronting, because the work of the ministry for you is a confrontation with the powers of darkness. Are you following me? You kind of your assignment, your kingdom assignment, your kingdom service is a serious confrontation with what? With the powers of darkness. So, Jesus says there's a need for power. Then we're going to be my witness indeed and witness me to the world and bring my life, my kingdom, my life to your sphere of influence. You need power. Are you following me? And this power will not come unless you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> this power will not come unless you are filled with the Spirit. This power will not come unless you receive the fullness of the Spirit. Praise Jesus forevermore. And I said in the morning that there's a part of the, there's a, there's a contest where you receive the baptism of the Spirit, the fullness of the Spirit, you are filled with the Spirit in your closet, personally. And that even this personally is because you are rightly connected to the local assembly. Are you following me? And on the other hand, the baptism of the Spirit, we are filled with the Spirit. We receive the fullness of the Spirit as we assemble together. Are you following me? You receiving the fullness of the Spirit, you being baptized with the Spirit is not when you start catching chair. Are you following me? It's when a portion of the Spirit is coming into you and upon you. Are you following me? In every of our gathering, there is a baptism of the Spirit that we undergo. Every time we assemble, we are being immersed more and more into the Spirit. Are you following me? The service might be so quiet, no sound of cheer, no gun, no scratch. Are you following me? Nothing is scattering. But because we are gathered, are you following me? We are assembling together and we are worshipping the Lord in songs and the word and all of that. There is an impartation of the Spirit. There's a baptism of the Spirit. Now you find that as you keep coming to church and you are practicing the word, you see that you are changing. It's an immersion into the Spirit. You are being immersed into the Spirit. You are being baptized into the Spirit. Are you following me? The baptism of the spirit is what destroys the life of the flesh. Are you following me, my friends? Are you following me, my friends? Huh. Let me just take it gradually. Are you following me? 
Are you following my friends? Because if you take something and immerse it in a fluid or something, you no longer see that thing. Are you following me? Baptism means immersion, completely immersed, completely overwhelmed. Are you following me? So, <laughs> so the baptism of the Spirit for us is the disappearance of our soul life. His disappearance of the life of the flesh. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. When you got saved, you came in, you were saved, yes, but there's still a lot of carnality. A lot of things that don't look like Jesus. It is the baptism of the Spirit, are you following me, that removes all those infiltration and things that don't look like Jesus. It is the baptism of the, of the spirit that cuts away the powers of the flesh. <laughs> Are you following me? The baptism of the spirit is not merely that. Are you now born again? Yes. Have you been baptized? The Holy Ghost? No. Oh yeah. Go and pray for him. Take him somewhere. Go and pray for him. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Just receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Oh, you should now receive. Oh, you have been baptized. Yes. That's part of it. <laughs> Are you following me? Well, that's not unto the baptism of the Spirit. Because we find that the baptism of the Spirit. Now, that is the first receiving or the reception of baptism. Are you following me? There's an initial baptism into the Spirit, of the Spirit. That's what you receive when you first give life to Jesus. And as they receive the Holy Ghost and you're baptized. You begin to speak in tongues as an evidence. That initial baptism. But the plan is to make you a witness. Are you following me? And a witness must look like what he's witnessing to. <laughs> Are you following me? Are you following my friends? The power of a witness is that he asks he has the information, he has the privileged information, the evidence of what is of what is witnessing to. Are you following me? Now, you as a witness for the Lord Jesus, are you following me? There has to be that evidence of, of Jesus, of his life in you. Are you following me? So, the power of your witnessing for Jesus is that transformed life. That is now looking like Jesus. Are you following me? But we can't have such transformation unless there's an immersion in the spirit. Are you following me? So there must continually be a baptism and immersion in the spirit of God. It is as this baptism calls every time, are you following me? In close set. And also, as we come to church, there's a baptism happening right now. You don't need to see it. Are you following me? And I'm not prophesying. I'm, do- I'm teaching doctrine. It's not prophecy. I'm not giving you a word of knowledge. There's a portion of the spirit that is overwhelming you now. You are being soaked into the spirit to effect a change, to bring out the life of Jesus so you can be a witness. Are you following me? So, every time in your personal quiet time, and when we come to church this way, every time you meet with the Lord, personally, and our assembly together, there's an immersion. Are you following me? There's what? An immersion. There's baptism. And the purpose of this baptism is to cause the disappearance of the life of the flesh. So that only the spirit's life is seen. Are you following me? Because only the spirit's life can, can witness to the life and person of Jesus. Are you following my friends? So I said that the Christian man is saved to be a witness for the Lord Jesus. Guys, are you with me? Are you following me? Are you following me? He's speaking in tongues is the only thing good about your Christianity you have not yet started. So if I have spoken in tongues
tongues for the past 30 years of their life, they've not won one soul to Jesus. One. That's a wasted, wasted, that's wasted speaking in tongues. They are wasting it. <laughs> have you seen Christians who speak in tongues and they are fornicating? They are, they are doing Yahoo. Do you understand? Is that one baptism? Is that, you understand know what I'm saying? He says when the Holy Ghost comes, he gives you power so you can be a witness. So, tongues is one of the signs of the initial, yeah, the word, of the initial baptism of the Spirit. But the baptism of the Spirit for the believer is meant to be a continuous thing. And this is scripture, this is doctrine. You find like three different times in the scriptures, at the upper of them, they were filled with the Spirit. In chapter 4 of Acts, they were filled with the Spirit. In another chapter, they were filled with the Spirit. And individually, you see Peter, Peter being filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, yes, you know what I'm talking about. It's not like the new better friend. The new better friend is one. But the baptism of the Spirit is continual. And the purpose of this baptism is for your engagement of the world. It's so you can be a witness for the Lord Jesus. Praise Jesus for the moment. Shout hallelujah. So, without the fullness of the Spirit, we can't be witnesses unto Christ. It's in the spirit of our assembly together that we receive the fullness of the spirit and we can't receive the fullness of the spirit without the spirit of our assembly together. Praise Jesus for everyone. So go back to Acts chapter 1. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. We said, we said, he has had of me. So there was a commandment for them to wait for the Holy Ghost because they need him. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days ends. So the promise of the Father they were to wait for was the what? Holy Ghost. Now verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Now I'll show you in another part of this teaching as it progresses. Maybe not today. That the disciples were already born again here. These guys were already new creation guys. You understand? They were born again. Already, they were new creation. Already had the life. Eternal life here. I'll show you later. So he says that. <laughs> these guys need power. So at this point, they are not yet received power. Are you following me? Are you following me? And the Holy Ghost has not yet come upon them. Hear me where, hear me where. Hey, do you understand scriptures? Before this place in John 21, Jesus has breathed upon them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. So which Holy Ghost again? They are different. Is in Holy Ghost, but different oppression. The Holy Ghost they received in John chapter 21 was to impart the new life to them. Was to bring them new creation. I'll still show you very well. That's where they became born again. It was in that place they became born again. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. So at that point, they became born of the spirit. Are you following me? So these guys, so let me just, I've mentioned it briefly to you. I'll still show you very well. So just agree with me. Believe me. I can't lie to you. I can't be lying. I can't be teaching Bible and be lying. These guys were born again here. Uh-huh. So these born again guys, Jesus said, they have not yet received power. He said, the Holy Ghost has not yet come upon them. He said, they've, he said, yes, you are now born again, but you've not Come into the experience of that immersion of the spirit or in the spirit. Are you following me? Is that you don't have power yet? <laughs> so there are many Christians that don't have power yet. And without power, you can't rule your world. It takes power to rule your world. Go and ask those in, in, in darkness. 
Those that are ruling in that, those, those that are ruling the world and they are not born again, it's power that is to rule. You can't rule your world without power. Are you following me? Don't let glow deceive you, rule your world. You think by using global chrome that yeah, you can rule your world? <laughs> Ordinary SIM card, you have to rule your world with SIM card. <laughs> you need power to what? To rule your world. So Jesus says this power comes. Don't forget verse 5. For John should be baptized with water, and not many days ends, he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So, this power comes when you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. When the Ghost comes upon you. <laughs> are you following me? Shout hallelujah. So, that means you can be a Christian already and not have power. You can be a Christian and not have the experience of baptism in the Holy Ghost. Some, some have never received the initial experience, not to talk of the continuous experience. You know, there are many Christians who have never been baptized in the Holy Ghost initially. Not to not talk of this. And many have received the initial one, are you following me? And they can speak in tongues. They can prophesy. But they still don't have power. Because power is produced by the continuous operation of the Spirit. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. Can we go now and turn off the generator and say, hey, it should be where this started, it has produced some power for us. Let's turn it off now. For power to, for us to sustain power, almost able to what to what is produced power. It was what? Continue to run. Are you following me? You can't own the gem for five minutes and say, yes, we already have the light we have here, so you have to off it now. The light will continue. <laughs> Are you following me? For power to be sustained, the source of power must continually run. So, for you to sustain the power of the Spirit in your life, there must be a continuous experience of the immersion in the Spirit, of the baptism in the Spirit. You must continually be filled with the Spirit. Look at Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 16. Let me show you. We'll come back here. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse... Yeah. See then, who was Paul talking to in this scripture? Talk to me. Unbelievers or believers? Believers, right. Beautiful. See then that he works that comes perfectly, not as fool but as wise... Redeem the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with, with wine, wherein is excess. But what? Talk to me about what? But be filled with the Spirit. <laughs> Do you understand? You must, the believer must maintain a state where he is filled with the Spirit. Be immersed in the Spirit. Be baptized in the Spirit. Are you following me? So, can you see scriptures now? For the believer, being filled with the Spirit, being baptized with the Spirit. Are, are you following me? See, don't forget English. It's English, English you say. Filled with the Spirit and baptized with the Spirit is the same thing. Jesus Christ said in Acts 1, that's right. He said, not many days ends, you shall be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Right? Hmm? In verse 8, he said, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, he has changed the word again. But meaning the same thing. Chapter 2. And they were all filled with the Spirit. Go there. So you won't think I'm lying. We'll come back here again. Go to Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. Acts 2 verse 1. Praise Jesus forevermore. You know, I love the Bible. It's not confusing. Unless you want to confuse yourself. The Bible is not confusing. It's clear. Unless you want to confuse yourself. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all like in one place. Uh huh. And suddenly there came a sound, a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as a fire. And sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And what happened? Talk to me. And they were all what? Few the Holy Ghost. 
So what was, what was his experience? The baptism experience. They didn't say and they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. But what happened? It's baptism. It's just a change of words. I just want you to know that if you see filled with the Spirit, it's the same as baptized in the Spirit. Don't be lost. Hmm? So what Jesus said will be happened to them that they'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's happened to them here. The first in the initial one. You understand? And the Bible, when, when the Bible wanted to describe, it said they were filled with the Spirit. So anywhere you see filled with the Spirit, it's talking about being baptized with the Spirit. So go back to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Ephesians 5, 18. Praise Jesus. Uh-uh. 18. And be not drunk with wine when it's excess, but what? Be filled with the Spirit. Does this look like a one-off? What does it look like to you? A continuous experience. Are you following me? So, the experience of the believer with the baptism of the Spirit is what? Continuous one. <laughs> because there must always be a supply of power for his kingdom mandate. Are you following me? And look at verse 19. <laughs> Speaking to yourselves in psalms and means and spiritual songs, singing my making melody in your heart to the Lord. So it gives us how or some prescription of how to be filled with the Spirit. It is in the context of speaking to yourself. Not that you sit there alone. <laughs> and you are speaking to yourself like this. You are speaking to... No, no, no. Speaking to one another. Are you following me? He said, be filled with the Spirit. He now shows us how or, part, or some of the ways to achieve this. He said, speaking to yourselves. So as we are assembled together and we are speaking to ourselves, we are being filled with the Spirit. Hmm. Do you understand? As we are assembled together and we are speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making money in our water and all of that, are you following me? We are being immersed into the Spirit. So there's an immersion going on right now. Forget all those feelings that you need. You want to feel goosebumps. Which goosebumps? Who does goosebumps stop? The Lord may give you goosebumps good. But you must understand what is spiritual and what is not spiritual. So when you put the goosebump is a response to the keyboard, to the sound of the keyboard. So when you only get slain when keyboard is sounding. So let someone get slain. No, 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 no. And the keyboard is sounding. Let the keyboard just go off. So when people stand up, I've heard stories of some people that they just, they, were, they said they were slain, no? And the keyboard just went off. They stood up fast, sharp, sharp. The guy just, are you following me? So we're not talking about, about those kinds of experiences. They are good. And Lord can give us. Are you following me? Are you following me? But are you following me? But that you are falling down on the chair, you are breaking the chair, scattering the chair. In fact, if you break anything in this church, you will buy it back. <laughs> so when the Holy Ghost is carrying you, be careful when you, when you let him carry you to. Control him. <laughs> no, no, don't do anything. If you break anything, you will buy it. And things are not very expensive. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't, don't look for, in this conversation, don't look for outward experiences. That's not the guarantee. That's not the proof. Are you following me? The proof of being, of being filled with the Spirit are not your outward experiences when you are falling on the chair and breaking the chairs. Are you following me? The proof that you are filled with the Spirit, praise Jesus forevermore. The proof that you are filled with the Spirit is that what? You have power to be a witness. Are you following my friends? Are you following me now? <clears throat> are you following me? The proof that you are filled with the Spirit, that you are undergoing an immersion in the Spirit, that you are being baptized with the Spirit, is not that chairs are falling. <clears throat> it's not that you are ascending to heaven. Are you following me? 
It's not that you are crying and rolling on the floor. Those are good. But that's not the proof. The proof that you are filled with the Spirit is that you have power to be a witness for Jesus. That's what Jesus told us. You have what? Power to be a witness for Jesus. So, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. So, your personal work is very, very important. Are you following me? And also, our assembly life. Because your personal work with Jesus is only valid in the context of the assembly life. If you are not connected to a local assembly, are you following me? Your personal work is not valid. No personal work. God doesn't recognize you. As I described in the morning, that man God is angry. Are you following me? So the proof that the believer is filled with the Spirit is that what? He has power to be a witness for Jesus. So can you see how he said we should be filled? Speaking to yourself in Psalms and names. So as we are here right now, as we are gathered here, there is a baptism going on. There is what? A baptism going on. There's an immersion in the spirit. There's a breaking away of the outward man. We are changing. See, 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 see. We each time we come to church and hear the word of the Lord and we plan to do it and do it. We are changing. This word has power to change us. Our gathering is powerful. He said in Psalms and, 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 and spiritual songs, singing and all that. So when the choir, is, and it's not only when I'm teaching that you have been baptized in the spirit. When the choir is ministering, you have been baptized. Are you following me? When someone stands there to share a testimony, you have been baptized in the spirit. Are you following me? Whatever we do when we come together, what is an avenue for your baptism. Oh my Jesus. That's what we must take everything serious and treat it as spiritual. Are you following me? We must take it as what? We must treat it as spiritual. Because everything we come to do here, are you following me? Is a tool for our baptism. In the spirit. Acts 1 verse 8. Quickly run there again. Oh, glory to Jesus forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Amanda Kropreti Sefelandia Shabaka Fulesus. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So, when you are filled with the Spirit, what happens to you? You fall on the floor. Talk to me, you fall on the floor. You start rolling on the floor. You start crying. Those things can happen, right? Huh? But, they, but they are not the proof. The proof that a man is filled with the Spirit, that a man has received, or has received the baptism of the Spirit, that what? He receives power. Can you say power? Oh. Hey. <laughs> So when you are being baptized with the Spirit, when you are being filled with the Spirit, you can enter your workplace and bring transformation. Oh, my Jesus. When you are being filled with the Spirit, you can do a design, and that design can turn the heart of men to Jesus. And you, do not, you don't even have to write Jesus on the design. But because you are being filled and you have received power, you can leave an emblem of power on the design. And men see the design and their heart is longing for Jesus. When you are filled with the Spirit, when you are baptized with the Spirit, and you receive power, you can sew a cloth, and someone puts it on. Are you following me? And the person begins to just yearn for Jesus. I don't have to write Jesus on it. Guys, you will engage the world. Are you following me? You will engage the systems of this world. You will go, you must go into politics. You must go into fashion. You must go into education. You must go into the systems. Are you following me? He says Jesus wants to do what? Feel all things. <laughs> you must go there. But those places are strong places. So there's a need for power. Are you following me? But power comes through baptism. Power comes through immersion. 
That you are teaching a little child, you are teaching the child normal A for up and all of that. Are you following me? You are not saying anything about Jesus. But you are a man, a believer who is being baptized in the spirit. You have power and through your A for apple, if you are happy and you know clap your hands, you are depositing the seed of Christ in the child. The child is just seeing a light around you. The child just wants to be like Auntie Joy. Are you following me? You are putting something in the child. Not, are you following me? Because some of you make a mistake. Some of you go to your office and start preaching. They will sack you. It's not every office you can be preaching. No? But it can take power to every office. Are you following me? Because if you are preaching, you can say you are disturbing. That is not part of the ethics. But nobody, nobody will see power in your pocket. <laughs> nobody can say you should not bring power. Because power is inside you. But preaching, you have to speak out. You have to talk. Some place they even they can pray. There are some people that they can tell you it's not allowed. Are you following me? But power is allowed everywhere because they, because they don't even know about it. <laughs> Are you following? Me? Are you following? Me? You can take power away. Nobody can stop power. Nobody can stop power. So you may not be able to preach in your office in your workplace, but if you can, you should. If you don't have such restriction, don't be ashamed of the gospel. You should. But if you can't, you can take power there. You can take power there. You can be a witness for Jesus. You can take power there and bring transformation. You can take power there. Your boss has a problem, you can solve it. He has a, he has a problem in his home, you can solve it. His wife has stroke, you can heal her. You follow me? The, the company is in trouble. They, they, there's a great problem they can't solve. They've been trying to, they've called expert, expertise and experts and all of that. They can't solve it. This power can produce wisdom. <laughs> what, what Daniel demonstrated in Babylon was power in the wisdom dimension. What Joseph demonstrated in Egypt was power in the wisdom dimension. Sometimes the Lord gives you the ability to solve problems. It's an expression of the power of the Spirit. That if the company cannot produce the solution, they know how much billions they will lose. They know they can crash. They've tried, 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 tried. Cut all the white men. But you can go there with power and receive and, this, and convert this power to wisdom and inspiration of the Spirit and solve the problem. And, and you didn't call Jesus. You didn't, you didn't mention Jesus. They will not come and meet you secretly like what? Like Nicodemus. Oh God, how you take that thing? Are you following me? They will come and meet you. How did you do it? Uh-uh. We know your rank now. Yeah. When you are just a low level. We've called on Imboto. How did you do it? You not tell him about what? Jesus. You will not preach. <laughs> do you understand? Guys, we need power. So the proof of our, of our baptism in the spirit is what? Is that we have power. And what's the purpose of power? Talk to me. To be a witness. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. <laughs> so when this power is lacking, we can't be a witness for Jesus. You can say you are born again. You can say you are a new creation. You can speak all the tongues in the world. But this witness, you can't be. Because very soon, you yourself will start getting corrupted. You start taking bribe in the office. And you call it wisdom. <laughs> are you following me? You start doing on the hand method. Because you don't have power. And the truth is, in this matter, you can't be neutral. You need power to change the systems or the systems will overpower you and change you. Are you following me? Are you with me? You need power to do what? To change the systems or the systems will overpower you and change you. Many Christians have been changed. They've been changed. (laughs) Many Christians, right? That are shouting now. Just give me an opportunity. Let me become the president of Nigeria. Become the governor. You don't even know what they're saying. Do you have power? Do you have power? You think you're, you're going to sit there with, with empty soul, empty head? You have power. You need power. 
This is the reason why many Christians go into these systems and fail. They don't have power. Because to be a witness for Jesus, you need power. Have you seen someone who got a very good job, a very high paying job? The person was very fervent in church before, committed. Are you following me? Spirit filled and all of that. But he just suddenly got a good job. They increased your salary. And you, you went cold. Ah, what happened to you? They increased salary, you went cold. You don't have power. You don't have power. Honorary counselor. They made you just honorary counselor in the area. Before you were firebrand, as it were. You became counselor. Look at government chairman. You, you went cold. You don't have power. You went there without power. You were not prepared. Guys, prepared for this system. So. And, and that's what I was speaking to you about. That's what I was talking to you about. Prepare for these things, guys. If you go there without power, you, they'll corrupt you. They will change you. You can't change anything. But the reason you are going is so that you can be a witness. You can witness to the life of Jesus. You need power. Can you say power? Power. You need power. To be a witness unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost past of what? Of the head. In the vision, it says what? He wants to fill all things. That he might fill all things with himself. So, and unto the uttermost part of the head. So, Jesus wants us to witness him throughout the head. And this is how he's going to fill all things. He's going to what? Feel all things. And it can happen. If it's a mission impossible, Jesus Christ will not give us that mission. Jesus Christ does not give a man a mission that can be accomplished. You understand? If Jesus gives you a mission and you fail to accomplish it, it's because you did not follow his prescription for the accomplishment of the mission. So he says we can accomplish this mission. But how? By receiving power. Can you say power? So people think if you go into politics, you have to be corrupted. No, 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 no. You, you don't have to be. And Christians have to go there. You are corrupted when you know what? Have power. And you don't have power when what? You are not baptized. And you are not baptized when you what? You are forsaking the assembly of the brethren. When you are not assembling. We are not fellowshipping. You are not speaking to yourself in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. <laughs> are you following my friends? And not to the uttermost part of the head. So it's a mission that is possible. And Jesus shows us how. By being baptized in the Holy Ghost. By being filled with the Spirit. Are you following my friends? So. From practical experience and from this and from scripture, this scripture, this scripture and many other scripture, it is clear or it is assumed that you can be a Christian without power. You understand? You can be what? A Christian without power. You can be a Christian who is not baptized in the Spirit. You can be a Christian who is not being filled with the Spirit. You can be a Christian who is not being immersed in the Spirit. And one of the ways to cut yourself away out of this immersion is to cut yourself out of the local assembly. It's to cut yourself away from our fellowshipping together. It's to cut yourself away from our assembling together, from the assembly life. Once you do this, you can't be filled with the Spirit because they're speaking to yourselves. Guys, when you are rightly connected to a local assembly, are you following me? And you, you, you honor the spirit of the local assembly and you value our assembling together, you will be powerful. Because every of our meeting, there's an immersion of the spirits. Are you following me? In every of our meeting, there's a baptism in the spirit. So, there's an assumption here that you can be a believer and not have power. And not be filled with the spirit of the spirit. So Jesus was talking to born again guys. And he said, guys, you never get power. Don't leave Jerusalem. <laughs> if you leave Jerusalem and you say you want to go, you want, big boys, you want to go and witness Jesus. 
they will corrupt you. You will go back to fishing. The reason why you went back to fishing after I died was because you didn't have power. See, 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 see. Guys, if you don't receive power, are you following me? If you are not being baptized in the spirit and you don't receive power, you go back to your former way of life. Are you hearing me? You go back. Verse 4 again. You go back. This was what happened to Peter and the rest. After Jesus had died, Peter said, oh, I go out fishing. And they all followed him. There was no power. <laughs> Are you following me? There was no power. He said, I go out fishing. What you have left behind to follow Jesus, if you don't have power, you go back to pick it up. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. Are you with me? What you have left behind to do what? To follow Jesus. If you don't what? Have power, you what? Go back to pick it. You go back to pick it. You go back. And you'll be, and you be worse than before. You go back. So Jesus did not want this to happen to them again. Are you following me? Because they, they went back at the time. Are you following me? Jesus does not, did not want it to happen to them again. Because he's now committing a mandate to their hands. Praise Jesus forevermore. So he had to command them not to depart from Jerusalem. Because if they depart from Jerusalem without being baptized in the spirit, without receiving power, they will depart into their fish business. <laughs> they will go back into their fish business. They will go back. They will go back to become, they will continue as tax collectors. They will go back. See, guys, if you, if you are without power, if you are a Christian and you are not receiving power, without power, you go back to continue to smoke it, go. You, you go back to yao yao, you go back to runs. You, you go back. You need power to keep you. You go back. You be a mere nominal, an ordinary Christian. Some of you might not even do obvious things. But Satan cannot fear you. You have, you have no reputation in the kingdom of darkness. They don't, they, they are just a mumu, they are a dog. They don't, they don't care about you. You are a puppet. So you just come on and they say, don't leave up. Wait. If you live without power, it's detrimental to your soul. So many believers enter trouble because they live without power. God is not afraid to give you big things. He's not afraid to give you positions in this life. But are you ready to receive power? Because if you enter there without power, <laughs> it's not you that will come out to. You will change. They will change you. What, what does it cause God to make you the local government chairman? What, local government, local government chairman, the governor. What, what does it cause God? It doesn't cause God anything. But those seats are all seats. You need power to sit on them. Those spheres, in, are you following me? Fashion, entertainment, education, all of those things. They are all seats. You need power. Look at oh man, then don't go. To bad law without receiving power. Your life will spoil. Do you know how many Christians, they say they want to travel to the abroad. I want to go to Canada, go to Kiniko. They go without power. They come back, their life has spoiled. It's not Canada that has spoiled their life. Are you following me? It's the lack of power. Because some Christians also go to that Canada. Are you following me? And they turn the place around. They turn their spheres around. Guys, your lack of power will destroy you. And to make you useless. Go to verse 5. For John truly baptized with water. Hey, yeah. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days. And it's just there. Let me see how far I can go on this point. If I can't finish it, I'll continue on Sundays. Don't forget, he had comm- they were born again. Are you following me? And he had commanded them. Praise Jesus forevermore. They were born again. And he had commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. Huh? But to wait for the promise of the Father. To wait for the Holy Ghost. He now made a very strong statement. I've always read this, this, this scripture and just overlook and just pass by. And on. Is it on? What's on? 
is hanging. Okay. You want to write me a letter? Is it love letter? If you have your Bible, open it. Acts 1 verse 5. Praise Jesus. Verse 4. And being assembled with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, you have heard of me. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. <laughs> you know, I've been telling you that these guys were born again, and I'm trying to, to press on the point that you can be born again and not have power. Wow. Praise Jesus forevermore. You'll have taken charge from the hands now. <laughs> no, Allah. It must not, this kind of thing must not happen. We are, we are growing an excellent church. So let's put this together for excellence. Hmm? They left, the charger of the system is not here, so it has gone off. Let me expose what happened. So people don't be looking at what happened. The system has gone off. They didn't bring the charger. So we are growing an excellent church. We want it should not happen again. Everything you need should be complete. You are full gospel inside darkness now. <laughs> go out of the jail. Let's go. <laughs> Which I, I I I didn't bring my charger. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the battery has gone. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. But we have promise of the Father. We said he, you have heard of me. Verse five. For John truly baptized with water. Let me just study this a bit. And I'll continue next week Sunday by God's grace in the morning. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now I've been saying that these guys are born again. And Jesus says what? Well, they need power in order to be a witness for him. In answer, they should wait, not leave Jerusalem. He gave them a commandment. Are you following me? That they should not leave what? Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father. And I made a statement. For John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, many times when you say things like that, that for John truly baptized, let me use that same statement. Then I'll, I'll bring out what I'm trying to say. If I don't teach what I want to teach on it. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. It will look like, if you look at it on the surface, it will look as if Jesus Christ was undermining the baptism of John. You understand? For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Okay. Eh, okay. John has baptized with water, but you shall be baptized. But as if that baptism of John is not really important. Does it sound like that? You understand? It's like that but sounds like a negator. Uh, of what he has first said. Like, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Not many days hence. As if all you need is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. As if. It sounds like that, right? As if we can do away with the baptism of John and just stay with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's not true. Are you following me? Now, Jesus was explaining a very serious matter here on the reason why they need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. He was saying that despite the baptism of John, you still need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to just put me carefully. <laughs> He's saying that the baptism of John is very important and crucial, but it is not complete without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of John is necessary, but it will be useless without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not, is not possible without the baptism of John. <laughs> that unless you have received the baptism of John, you can't receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that baptism of John, you may think it's water baptism, it's not water baptism. I'm going to show you this evening. I'm going to show you briefly. Then we'll close and I'll continue on Sunday morning. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Guys, it's not enough to be born again. You must baptize the Holy Ghost. 
Should I tell you what Jesus Christ was saying in essence? About, I'll, still, I'll explain to you. He said, I know you are born again. I know you are not a new Christian. I know you are not Christians. But that is not enough. You must be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because the baptism of John represents us becoming a new creation. Are you following me? Now look at it again. For John truly baptized with water. That's very strong. What if he said for John baptized with water? It will still be, be a valid statement. But it's a very serious word. For John truly baptized with water. The baptism of John was true. <laughs> Are you following me? For John truly baptized with water. John did not falsely baptize with water. The baptism of John was not a false baptism. It was a true baptism. Oh my Jesus. For John truly, he did it truly. Are you following me? Ah, yeah. Oh my Jesus, how can I pour all these things with my heart to you? Praise Jesus evermore. John was not just doing what he, he was not just doing something good. He was doing something true. Oh, my Jesus. John was not just doing what he felt in his good mind to do. He was doing what was true that he truly received as an ordinance from God. For John truly baptized with water. So the baptism of John is valid. It is important. It is necessary because it is true. Are you following me? But for the purpose of being a witness, the baptism of John is not enough. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. Oh my God. You are a new creation. It is true. You are truly a new creation. You are truly born again. You are truly a child of God. But to be a witness is not enough to be born again. The baptism of John is not enough. You must be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? I know you are truly born again. We can't say you are not born again. Your born again is true. Your being a child of God is true. The moment you came to Jesus and surrendered your heart to him, you were truly born again. You are truly a new creation. But there's an assignment before you. Are you following me? That you being a new creation is not all that is needed for it. That you are a new creation, you also need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. So you can have power for your kingdom assignment, for your kingdom service. So you can have power to execute your kingdom service. So the reason why John baptized in water is so that he can be baptized in the Holy Ghost. So the reason why you got born again was so that what? You can receive power. So that you can be baptized in the Holy Ghost to receive power to execute your kingdom service. Are you following me? So, the baptism of John is not, is not, is not second, is not second video. It's not lower to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? The baptism of the Holy Ghost is not higher than the baptism of John. In the sense of what the baptism of John means. Are you following me? Because without the baptism of John, you can't receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The baptism of John prepares you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost validates your baptism, the baptism of John, and empowers it. Are you following me? You being a new creation prepares you To receive the baptism of the Spirit. Through which you receive power to execute your kingdom mandates. Are you following me? For John truly baptized with water. John was not a thief like others. Like the Pharisees and and the Sadducees. Sadducees were thieves. He said John is true. Guys, born again is true. Can I say born again is true? Your reality in Christ is true. Your being a new creation is true. It is valid. They recognize it. Are you following me? 
Are you following me? But even though it's true, <laughs> but not many days ends, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Even though it's true, to be a witness for Jesus, the born again man, the new creation man, must be baptized in the Holy Ghost. He must be filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise Jesus. Let me begin to try to show you some things about the baptism of John. Are you following me? It is symbolic of the new creation, of, being, of becoming a new creation. Are you following me? Now, the instruments John received, now don't forget, John baptized with water. It is Jesus that baptizes with the Spirit. Are you following me? Paul, Peter was speaking that Jesus, after he ascended to heaven, received the promise of God and poured him out on us. Are you following me now, my friends? And it's even somewhere in the scripture, and I'll still show you. So, <laughs> both John and Jesus are baptizers. Are you following me? They are what? Baptizers. And they are both ordained by God for the work of baptism. Are you following me? God ordained them for what? For the work of what? Baptism. And he gave them the tools for their work. So John baptized with water. Jesus baptized what? With the Holy Ghost. So the tool for the baptism of John is water. Are you following me? The tool for the baptism of Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? But the purpose, listen now, the purpose of the baptism of Jesus is to give you power. Are you following me? The purpose of the baptism of John is to make you a new creation. <laughs> Are you following me? Are you with me? The purpose of the baptism of John is what? Is to make you a new creation. to make you born again. The purpose of the baptism of Jesus is to give you power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost. Look at the Bible. Praise Jesus for the moment. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Let's see how far, how far we can go. And let me find a good place to pause it. And I'll continue on Sunday morning by God's grace. Matthew 3 from verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 3 from verse 1. Let's read from verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Now, the water is a symbol. It was, it was the tool God gave him to achieve the purpose for which he was sent. Are you following me? But there's more to that water baptism. Water baptism is beyond, the this, this symbolism is beyond what we've turned into today. They just put in, you, you enter water and you come and just say that's water baptism. There's a symbolism. Water baptism means the symbol is that we are now buried with Christ and you have risen with him. Are you following me? It is the symbol of, oh my Jesus. Water baptism is the symbol of a spiritual reality that you have experienced. You people need to understand what, what, what baptism me meant in those days. Though. Because it was done publicly. So anybody they saw that was undergoing water baptism in those days, they knew that they have lost the person to Jesus. Are you following me? It's not like now that you can do water baptism publicly and you can still go back and do yahoo yahoo. Those days, if you did water baptism, even the people of the world will not want to embrace you back because they know they've lost you. So it's a sign, water baptism, are you following me? It's a sign that this person has been buried with Jesus and has risen with Jesus. Are you following me? It's a sign that he has embraced a new life. It's a sign that he has waved goodbye to the world. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. So it's not the ritual itself that is important, but the essence of that ritual. So, John's, waters, John's baptism, there's an essence of that ritual. Are you following me? So don't, 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 look, at, don't look at it on the surface that they just put you in water. They just put people in water and bring them out. No, no, no. There's an essence. Now look at it. It says, in those days, John the Baptist, preaching 
in the wilderness of what? Judea. So what was he doing? Talk to me. He was preaching. <laughs> preaching. So John was a preacher. Preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is what? At hand. Hmm. So John was, was, was established to point men to the kingdom. Are you following me? John was established to bring men to repentance. Are you with me? To bring men to repentance so that they can participate in the kingdom. Are you following my friends? Are you following me? So John was what? Established so that what? He can, he can prepare men to repent for what? For participation in the kingdom. Let's keep reading. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his straight paths. And the same John and his raiment of camel's hair, and he laid down guard about his loins, and his meat was locust and honey. And then went out to him Jerusalem. Please look at it. Look at it. Then went out to him, what? Jerusalem and all Judea, and not the regions round about Jordan. I follow my friends. So you find, follow my friends, the region of oppression of John, where he performed his baptism, was the same region where Jesus was able to stay for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? It was the same region where, after they have received baptism, where they, was, they should stay in Jerusalem. Are you following me? And once they've received the, the baptism, they can now spread into those regions, other regions, to effect the work. Are you following me? So John's work of baptizing with water, are you following me? The effect or the circumference is in the same region as the work of Jesus in baptizing with the Holy Ghost. Because they said they should at Jerusalem. And John was baptizing in Jerusalem. Are you following me? Are you with my friends? Shout hallelujah. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea. And he was baptizing me in Judea. It's, it's the same location, you understand? Just like saying he gone to Obaduri and all of that. Uh-huh. And all Judea and all the region around about Jordan. Now look at it carefully. And were baptized of him in Jordan. Doing what? Confessing their sins. Hmm. So, once you receive the baptism of John, something will happen to you. You will confess your sin. You will repent. (laughs) Do you understand? You will do what? You will repent. Now, confessing their sins is not that one car that, hey, I stole, I, I fornicated. No, no, no. Renouncing their sins. Are you following me? Are you following me? So the baptism of John will make you what? Renounce your sin. Are you following me? The baptism of John separates a man as it were. I'm showing the symbolism. Why Jesus Christ said John truly baptized with water? But you shall be baptized with the ghost. The baptism of John causes a man to confess his sins. Causes a man to renounce his sins. Separates a man from his sins. The baptism of John causes a man to repent and follow the Lord. Are you following me? Are you with my friends? The baptism of John bears repentance in a man's heart. Are you following my friends? Are you with me now? Are you following me? The baptism of John does what? Bears repentance in a man's heart. Look at verse 7. And we baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Renouncing their sins. Doing away with their sins. To turn a new leaf. To lay on a new life. A new way of life. Are you following me? And for us, that means the new creation. Becoming a new creation. You know, they were not a new creation here. Are you following me? But it's symbolic. Now, look what it said to the Pharisees. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Are you following my friends? 
He saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to, come to his baptism, and he said to them, Oh, what? You should have bypassed. Because these Pharisees and Sadducees were hypocrites. They were evil people that, that wanted to show that they were good. So they say, you know that John, you know that Jesus also had a problem with them. You know Jesus had a problem with Pharisees and Sadducees. He was always dealing with them. So John too was dealing with them. Are you following me? Because the ministry of John is closely tied to the ministry of Jesus. And the Pharisees were a great hindrance to that ministry. Because the ministry of Jesus and John is to turn men to the kingdom of God. But the Pharisees would block the ways of men from that kingdom. So John and Jesus were always what? Dealing with them. But don't mind the fact, I want to, I want to, I want to, to glean something. That's why I'm, I'm saying this to you. Don't mind the fact that John was hard on them. I want you to see something from this scripture. So you can understand the, the symbolism of the baptism of John and that thing that Jesus Christ said that John truly baptized water, but he had been baptized with the Holy Ghost. That the new creation man still needs to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? All generation of vipers, are you following my friends? Look at what it now says. Who at one you to flee from the wrath to come? What did they come to? What did the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to? They came to what? His baptism. Look at it very well. But when is so many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism? Are you following me? Are you following my friends? They came to what? His baptism. He now said, who has, who has warned you to flee from the rocks to come? He was insulting them. He was indicting them. Are you following me? But he, he showed us a truth there. He said, who has warned you to flee from the rocks to come? Are you following my friends? Are you with me? What did they come to? His baptism. But what did they say? He said, they are trying to flee from the rocks to come. What's the meaning of this? Forget the fact that he abused the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He says something clear here. That coming to my baptism, are you following me? Is an escape route for you from the route to come. Are you following me? Do you understand? He said, you guys are coming to my baptism. Who warned you to flee from the route to come? That means that my baptism will do what? It will save you from the route to come. Friends, are you with me? Are you following? Do you understand? Who has wanted to flee from the road to come? That means anybody coming to the baptism of John is fleeing from the road to come. This is a type of the new creation, man. So the baptism of John is a type of how that the new creation man has fled from the road to come because he has now come to Jesus. Are you following me? Are you following me? Do you understand? He says, who has warned you to flee from the road to come? So that means whenever anybody was going to John's baptism, people were saying, this man has fled from the road to come. Are you following my friends? And this is symbolic of receiving the life of Jesus, of becoming a new creation. When you become a new creation, you have fled to the place of refuge. You have fled from the road to come. But Jesus Christ said, John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Even though you are now a new creation, are you following me? And you are truly so. You need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That the plan is not just to save you from the rocks to come. Are you following me? The plan is not just what? It's not just to save you from the rocks to come. The plan is to make you, is to make you witnesses to the life of Jesus here on earth. You know what I was saying in the morning that we should not have escape, escape his mindset. That the plan is not just to what? To save you from the rocks to come. The plan is to make you a witness for Jesus. To escape from the rocks to come, you need the baptism of John. Are you following me? You need to become a new creation. Are you following me? But to be a witness of Jesus, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Are you following me? Let me see if I can take one more scripture, then I'll, I'll just pause it here and continue on Sunday morning by God's grace. Let me see what's in the next scripture and see if I can just close there. Okay.
Okay. Let me just close here. Mark, Mark 1 verse 2. And we just close. Mark verse 4. Mark 1 verse 4. Mark 1 verse 4. We close there. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remissions of sin. Can you understand? Do you get it? He said, John did preach. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism. Are you following me? The baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So the baptism of John was for the remission of sins. Are you following me? You might be wondering how this happened. Only, only God can explain. But God gave him that assignment. And he's making it clear. The Bible makes it clear. That that baptism brought about the remission of sins of people. Do you understand? See, see, see. John's baptism is, is oh my Jesus, was another interface in the earth to bet the, the time of Jesus, to bet when Jesus would bring the fullness of God's plan for man. Just like we had the sacrifice of Moses and all of that. Do you understand me? And all of that. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? So John's baptism was also an interface. And the Bible says that was this man's baptism, are you following me, brought the remission of sins. You might be asking how, because you're only used to the fact that it's the blood of Jesus, and that, and that is true. But don't forget the blood of Jesus, and all that is the perfection. That's what brings the, are you following me? And after that blood has been offered, nothing else can atone for man's sin. Nothing else can bring remission of sins. Are you following me? But before Jesus died, because let me, let me talk to you, some people that were baptized in John's baptism, some of them would die before Jesus came. I mean, before Jesus died and resurrected. Are you following me? Are you with me? It's not everybody that was baptized in John's baptism that will be alive until Jesus Christ died and resurrected. Are you following me? And once you die, are you following me? It's judgment. You are waiting judgment. Are you following me? So, John's baptism was also a provision to keep the souls of men and keep their spirit until the perfect redemption of Jesus through his blood. Are you following me? So in some way, I can't explain how, but it is clear in the Bible that John's baptism brought about repentance. Are you following me? For the remission of sins. That you repent, that, and when you repent, your sins will be remitted. Says, are you with me? You understand the Bible? John did baptism in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Not See, see, get these things clear. It was not the blood, at this point, it was not the blood of Jesus for the remission of sin. Are you following me? Friends, are you with me? The way you're looking at me, are you following me? I won't close though. If you, if you don't respond well. Praise Jesus forevermore. Are you confused? He's clear in the Bible now. Read your, oh, the bring your Bible to a church, open it. John did baptism in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Now, let me explain to you. After Jesus died and resurrected, what do we have for, for, the, for the remission of sins? Talk to me. Talk to me now. After Jesus Christ died and resurrected, what do we have for the, for the remission of sins? The blood of Jesus. But there were some people before Jesus Christ died and resurrected that God did a package for them. And that package was called the baptism of John. As there was the package of the law of Moses. So John was an entire package to remit for the sins of those that will participate in his baptism. Are you following me? Are you following me? Until the perfecting and perfection of the blood of Jesus. See, let me talk. Let me, oh, Jesus. There's no time to take you to. Let me, just, man, let me just help you. Those that died during the law of Moses and followed, the, and followed God during the law of Moses and all of that. Are you following me? Every, every way God has made before Jesus came. Those that followed it, huh? are you following me? Their, their, their spirit was kept somewhere in heaven. Are you following me? They, didn't, they won't go to hell. It's not, everybody, it's not everybody that died before Jesus came that would go to hell. Some people followed the law of Moses as God gave them. Are you following me? Some people followed the right doings in their conscience. Some people followed the baptism of John. But all of them together, 
their spirits could not be made perfect. Are you following me? It's only the blood of Jesus that can perfect men. So that's why in, in Hebrews, it now says something about, you have come to the, to the spirit of just men made perfect. Are you following me? So it's the blood of Jesus that perfects the spirit of men. So, the, the package of Moses, the baptism of Moses, of John the Baptist, was a temporary solution. But actually for that period, remitted for their sins, but it could not perfect their spirit. It couldn't take away their sin, their sinful nature, their sinful life. So they could only be kept somewhere in heaven. I don't want to go there. I don't want to stress you. Not in this series. You understand? So that when Jesus now, so the, the lives of Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Caleb, are you following me? Until Jesus came, they could not enter the most holy place. Are you following me? Until Jesus Christ offered up himself as a sacrifice, nobody could enter into, into the most holy place. They were, they were somewhere in heaven. They could not enter the most holy place. But they had walked with God on earth and they had received a portion of remission of sins. Are you following through those things, that, through those packages? Are you following me? But once Jesus now came and offered a sacrifice, are you following me? Those men could now be perfected in their spirit. That's the meaning of what the Bible says in Hebrews, that the spirit of just men made perfect. Do you understand? Talking about those that lived before the sacrifice of Jesus. Are you following me? So the spirit has been made perfect. They now have access to the most holy place. Are you following me? So John's baptism here also, also, are you following me? Was for the remission of sins. Are you with me? Are you following me? What's the point of all this? And preach the purpose of repentance for the remission of sins. Now the new creation man has as his sin was remitted. What's the meaning of remission of sins? Your sin has been paid for, covered, as if you never sinned. This looks like the new creation man. Are you following me? This is a typology of the new creation man. That whenever anybody came to the baptism of John, the Bible said, I don't see, don't ask yourself, I don't know how God did it. It's just like asking how he also did that of Moses, the law of Moses. It's like asking how he did those that were without the law. Because the Bible shows us somewhere in Romans that some people were without the law. But that they have God's law in their heart, in their conscience, and they live and that, that God will deal, deal with them like that. So don't ask how God did it. But there are different dispensations in the Bible. And one of those dispensations is the baptism of John. The Bible makes it clear that the preaching of the baptism of repentance was for the remission of sins. Are you following me? Now, a man who has had his sin remitted, does that not look like the new creation man? Are you following me? So, John's baptism is a type. Are you following me? It's a typology of us becoming a new creation. But Jesus Christ said that what? It is true. It is good. It is beautiful. But it is not enough. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because that is the only thing that can give you power to be my witness. So the baptism of John, are you following me, makes us a new creation. It's a type of a new creation. What's the name of the baptism of John? Let me just, for the remission of sins. When we have our sins washed away, are you following me? When we come to Jesus and have our sins washed away, and have our sins taken away, we become what? A new creation. Are you following me? And having become a new creation, we cannot be baptized in the Holy Ghost. So we can receive what? Power. And that's why Jesus Christ said that what? Except the man be born of water and of the spirit. Hmm? So born of water, you have your sin washed away. Your sin remitted. Born of the spirit, you now receive the life of the spirit. Guys, are you following me? Let me just close. So Jesus Christ said, for John to be baptized with water, but not many days ends, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Guys, your new creation is valid. The life of God on your inside is true. But if you are going to be a witness for Jesus, you must be filled with the Spirit. You must be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Come begin to talk to God and pray. I'll continue this teaching on Sunday morning by God's grace. Ara ba 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 ba
scepter of the King of Kings. He is the Holy Ghost, the seal of the age to come. He's bringing everything in obedience to Christ. He is the Holy Ghost. The King of Kings is the Holy Ghost. Is the Holy Ghost the seal of the earth to come? He's bringing everything. He's bringing everything in obedience to Christ. There is the Holy Ghost. Is the King of kings He is the Holy Ghost He is the Holy Ghost hey. The seal of the age to come He's bringing everything He's bringing everything He's bringing obedience to Christ oh, He is the Holy Ghost He is the Holy Ghost The Spirit of the Lord the help of the Spirit, you can't be a witness for Jesus. Without the help of the Spirit, you can't fulfill your kingdom mandate. Without the help of the Spirit, you can't execute your kingdom service. Let me get to pray this evening and ask for a fresh baptism of the Spirit. We see in the Bible that the Bible says, be filled with the Spirit. Can you ask tonight for a fresh baptism of the Spirit? Let me get to pray the Holy Ghost and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you afresh. Ask for a fresh baptism of the Spirit. Ask for a fresh baptism of the Spirit. Oh, that the Holy Spirit fill you afresh. That you can receive that you can receive power to be a witness. Can you ask for a fresh baptism of the Spirit? Ragadosh, Rados, <laughs> Mama, 